Hey there, hi there, ho there, Touch Designer Programmers, Matthew here. So, one of the things that I have heard a bit in my conversations with folks online and uh, whatnot is that uh, while it's often really helpful to have a bunch of information about how we do uh, various types of operations here in Touch, one of the kind of missing ingredients is a solid kind of primer on how we actually think about using Python in Touch Designer. Now it's, it's you know, one thing to kind of like feel like, oh, I'm just going to go learn all of Python and then I can figure out how to implement that in Touch. Uh, and I think that one of the things that I've heard people talk about wanting is uh, a little more kind of concise examination of what exactly is going on with Python. Um, some kind of like uh, a way to get started and kind of wrap your head around what that might be and then see that here inside of the context of touch. Uh, a lot of us use Python uh, for scripting uh, various things here inside of Touch Designer and if you're brand new to that particular piece of coding uh, it can be a little bit kind of overwhelming to not only have to think about how you learn what Touch Designer is but also learn what this crazy thing called Python happens to be. So uh, I'm going to take a couple of uh, videos here, I guess, I'm going to do a short series on kind of learning the ins and outs of uh, a little bit of basic Python so we can begin to understand what that is and how we see that in relationship to what we do here inside of Touch Designer. Okay, that's uh, like blah, 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 long portion of all that. So we're going to do um, some kind of crazy things this time around. Today what we're going to look at is we're just going to look at printing. Printing is like one of the fundamental things that you have to be able to do uh, whenever you're using kind of a script-based situation because you need to be able to know what's going on. There are lots of ways to debug your code, but uh, using prints is one of the surefire ways to actually know precisely what's going on. And as we start to print things out, we can also begin to imagine what that's going to mean in a larger context and how we might use some of that. So we're going to go ahead and get rid of all the stuff that we normally find here in a basic project. We are going to split our view this time and um, while we normally would use this view over here to kind of navigate around some other part of our network, this time around we're going to use our drop down menu up here and we're going to go ahead and just load up the text port and dats. So we're actually going to use our text port a whole heck of a lot here today. Um, and we're not only going to use this where we can write things, but we can also actually use this to see some things happen. Okay, so what is going on? So what is Python? Python is a high-level uh, scripting language, or a high-level language, excuse me, um, that allows us to do lots of different kinds of operations with our computer, right? I'm not going to get into the nitty-gritty of what that, that means. There's plenty of resources online. I encourage you to do a little bit more reading to really kind of nail down what that is in your mind. Um, for us, we really are going to use Python as a scripting language, right? We're going to kind of like script kitty it up here a little bit. And rather than writing full applications with Python or full modules, we're really going to think about how we can use uh, the scripting portion of that in order to achieve particular ends here inside of our touch environment. That'll more, make more sense in a little bit uh, after a little bit of time, but for now, that's, you know, we're going to stick there. Okay. So let's start with the, you know, ye old <clears throat> standby, the hello world. So we're going to use a text at, text ads are going to be our best friend in the whole world this um, this time around. And what we're going to do is we're actually going to write our script, right? We're going to write the code that we want um, Touch Designer to execute here inside of this text stat, and then we're going to run that. And the simplest kind of uh, situation we might run into is we might run into something where we just want to print there, print something, right? So certainly we can print. Print happens to be uh, the command, right? This is what we're asking Python to do. And here inside of quotation marks, and we can use single ticks or double ticks, we're going to write what we want um, Python to print out for us. And this is your kind of default uh, kind of situation, right? So let's print hello world. Great. And if we right click on this and we hit run, we can see that hello world pops up over here inside of our text port. Now, we can also, uh, we can just as easily use double ticks. For this particular kind of operation, we should see hello world uh, print out twice. There's no difference between those two. But in Python, one of the important things for us to know is that we need to have matching tick marks whenever we're going to use them. So, 
for example, if we print hello world and we have a mismatched tick mark situation here, right? So we've got double quotes on one side, single quotes on the other side. When we go to actually run that, we can't, right? Because there's a problem here. So you might say, well, that's, that's great. So why would I ever use, um, you know, why don't I just pick one and only stick with that? Well, we might run into a situation where we want to print out something like, uh, I don't like pie, which is a lie. I do like pie. Uh, I should amend that. Right, so in this case, we need to use double quotes. If we were to try and print this out with just single quotes, right? So let's imagine we've got a single quote there and a single quote there. We're going to have a problem. And that's because we've got a single quote. And what it looks like is happening is it looks like we've closed that quote here. And then we've got this thing over here that Python doesn't know what to do with. So in this circumstance, right, if we're using double quotes, this is going to allow us to actually print out this thing. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay, so, so we've learned a little thing about quotes here already. Now the other thing that we can think about here right away is that we're actually, uh, what we're printing out is we're printing out a string, right? We kind of think of our, our data types that we use here inside of uh, Python and several different kinds of categories. So we could uh, print out a string, right? So this is a string, great. That seems pretty straightforward. And what's a string? Well, a string is a series of alphanumeric characters uh, that are enclosed with these, uh, you know, quotation marks. And I say it's a series of alphanumeric characters because this particular uh, series of characters doesn't carry with it any kind of mathematic operational quality, right? So. I'm not going to add these letters together, right? Like that's, that might be a, a kind of concept that we intuitively understand uh, as kind of like human thinkers, but we need a way to explicitly explain that to a machine. And that's exactly what we've got to do when we declare some of our, our data types. And we're going to get there, don't worry. Hang on if you're uh, feeling a little overwhelmed by that. So we could just as easily, uh, right, so we could print out a string. We could print out an integer, right? We could print out a whole number, all right? Uh, we could print out a floating point number, right? We could print out a number with a decimal point. That's what a float is. Great, so we've got a string, we've got an integer, We've got a float. We can also print out booleans, right? So booleans are things like true-false statements. So we can print this out, which means we can also print out false. Whoa, cat block city. So we can print both of those things. That's great, that's wonderful. So we've got a bunch of different kinds of things that we can print out. Groovy. That's wonderful. Now, we can also take those data types and we can assign them to variables. So in that case, we might think about like, okay, well, you know, what do I mean? A variable is gonna stand in for us, right? So I might declare something, right? I'm gonna say, I've got this thing called text. And text is this string. Right? Now, let's just go ahead and run that. And nothing happens. Well, why didn't anything happen? Nothing happened because we didn't actually tell Python that we wanted to do anything with this variable that we declared. We just declared it. We just said, hey, guess what? Text is this thing. So I can say, text is this thing, and by the way, while you're at it, why don't you print that thing out for me? Bada bing, bada boom. Right? That's really handy, that's wonderful. We're gonna, we can take advantage of that in lots of different ways, that's, uh, that's really fun. Um, 
And we could, uh, yeah. And that, let's look at let's look at uh, what we could do here. We might do something like uh, multiply that by two, right? Let's do just some kind of simple mathematic operation, and we can see that's hello stranger, hello stranger. Now that's different, right? Than if we were to say to try and do that with uh, a value, like let's say we've got an integer two. So we're going to call that my number instead. And I need to go ahead and say exactly that same thing. So my number, right, I've gone ahead and said that's a variable that's 2. I want you to take my number and multiply it by 2. So we're going to see a kind of fundamental difference in how we're multiplying text and how we're multiplying integers, right? Okay, well, we could do the same thing. Um, with a float, and let's actually call this my int, or excuse me, my float, and we should similarly see that when we run this, lo and behold, there we get something evaluated. Now we'll notice that when we are working with a float, we have a decimal point. So we end up with a decimal point that comes out of this thing, right? That's going to be important to hold on to. I kind of think about that. All right, well, what happens if we take something like a Boolean? Right? My Boolean is true. Oh, dear. What's, what's going to happen here when we do this? All right, let's run that. Two. Right. Okay. Why? Well, what if this number was four? Uh, okay, huh? And what if I just printed out my Boolean? True. Well, what does that mean? What if this was false? Okay, so you can see that's false. All right, what happens if I multiply that by 2 then? What do I get? Oh, jeez, what ha what's going on? Booleans are evaluated as uh, ones or zeros, right? They're on, they're off. They're true, they're false. So while we might declare this as false, right, when we evaluate that in this mathematic expression, what we're going to get is zero, because zero, right, this might as well be zero. Zero times two is zero. If this is true, then we're going to get two, right, because true really means one, one times two. 2 is going to be 2, right? So that's going to be, you know, I bring that up because at some point you might end up with a Boolean somewhere and it's uh, going to create a situation where uh, something isn't behaving the way that you expect it. And so, you know, maybe we do this, right? All right, and then I might decide, you know what, let's just print out my bool to make sure that I understand what's going on. Ah, and that's going to help me understand what's going on, right? I can see this is actually true, and that might be the, the heart of what uh, my fundamental misunderstanding is about this thing. Now, we can do lots of things with printing. We're going to go back to strings for just one hot second. Well, it's, it's not true. We're going to just do a lot of t string printing here today. Um, and we might think about a situation where we want to print something that's got multiple lines, right? So uh, I can imagine uh, a magical situation where I want to print out something on multiple lines, right? Okay, well, how do I, how do I print that? So I could, right? Let's uh, let's imagine that we take all this and I say uh, print, and I got a quotation mark here and a quotation mark down here, and let's oof, let's see what happens, right? That's a bit ugly and gnarly, and uh, I, what gives? Well, we've got all these return characters in here, right? We really need something like this. We got to put it all together. Okay, now we print this out. All right, let's, let's look at it. Oh, well, that's not right either, right? Because now I've got this one big long line. Okay, 
Well, we've got some special characters that are important for us to know about. And those special characters start with a backslash, right? So in this case, my special character in here, backslash n, means new line. So I want you to make a new line here, right? And let's find out where the other one is, where I want to print. So the next place I want a new line is here. Lovely. And then the last place I want a new line is here. Now this is still pretty ugly, right? I get what I want over here, but pff, this isn't any fun to read. Mm, okay, well, that's, that's still not ideal. So what might I do instead? I might instead, let's come back here. I'm going to copy all this business. And again, this time, instead of what we had before, I'm going to go ahead and put my text in here. I'm going to make a variable called text. And rather than just doing a single quotation mark, I'm going to do one, two, three, three quotation marks. Uh, for Python, this is an indicator that I've got a multi-line um, string. I've got something that runs over multiple lines. So now I want to print that out. So let's print out text now. And we can see that sure as shooting, that behaves closer to the way that I want it to. All right. Well, that's not so bad. What else have I got? Well, maybe what I want to do is maybe I want to actually define those lines individually. Right? So instead of this business, I could say uh, that this is line one. You might uh, get an idea of where I'm going, right? So I'm going to go ahead and just reuse this business here. Oops. Where? For some reason I didn't copy. Let's copy. Let's paste, paste, paste. Ooh, yeehaw. Right? Okay, so this is line one, line two, line three, line four. So now we could print line one. And we could do this shenanigan. Right? This seems like a fine way to do this. Still a little bit cumbersome, but whatever. This should still work. Oh, okay. That's, that's pretty great so far. Well, that's, you know, less than perfect, but I could deal with that. We've got another way that we could handle that situation, right? Maybe what we don't want to do is we don't want to break that up in multiple prints. We want to just say, hey, print line one, line two, line three, and line four. So we can actually ask to print multiple things by separating with them with commas. Now this is going to be probably not quite what we want, right? Uh, because that's still putting it all on one line. So maybe, right, we're going to add a new thing called new line. New, new, new line. Jeez Louise. And we're going to go ahead and use backslash n. Right? We happen to know that means new line. So we're going to do line one, comma, new line. And you can see what we're up to, right? So we've got a new line, and every time we actually want to break, we need to tell, uh, touch, we need to tell Python in this case, where we, uh, what we want to inject here. And we really have to be specific. The kind of... Uh, uh, leading principle, no matter what you're doing, we can run this, there it is, is that no matter what, we have to be explicit about what we want the machine to do, right? We're really just following a set of instructions. I've just told Python here, line one is this thing, print line one. Line two is this thing, print this thing. And when we run through this, we actually run through top to bottom. So we've uh, established all of our variables, and then we've printed them out top to bottom. Now that happens faster than we can kind of see it, right? Because computers are awesome. But we still need to think about the fact that we're essentially creating a recipe. We're really giving um, touch designer a set of instructions that we want it to execute. And we can think of those in a kind of top to bottom order. 
Okay. So th this is all well and good. This is like, this is great. I can see that where that's going. Maybe I don't want this indent, right? So maybe instead what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna add these things together. And when we add strings, this, the effect that we have is really that we join them together. And when we're working um, in an environment besides printing like this, right, then we might wanna use a Python method like join instead. But in this case, uh, we can see what happens if we just add them. Bada bing, bada boom. Okay. That's, that's pretty swanky and uh, you know, I'm pretty much on board with that. But let's look at something else that we might be able to do. I'm gonna go ahead and clear our text port here. Oops. Oh heavens, what did I do? Yeah. So let's drop in another text, that. And in this case, we're gonna play a little Mad Libs game, right? So I'm gonna start with some text. And I want this to be, hey there. And uh, we're gonna use a special character in this case. So we're gonna insert something that looks like this. Percentage sign S. And this is an indicator that we've got a, a substitution coming in that's a string. Now, next I'm gonna uh, put in a noun here. And the noun I'm gonna insert is monster. Because why not monster? Okay, well, what gives Matt? What's going on? Well, now I can print. And when I print this time, I'm gonna say text. So I wanna print out text. And then I wanna sub in my noun. Okay, so we should be able to run this. And now we can see that we've made our sentence, we've changed our sentence here, so that we can effectively just make one alteration and end up with a new construction, right? So, well, what else could we do there? We might think that we've got, we wanna add an adjective and we wanna add a verb. Right, this is one of those fun games that you can play. I'm just gonna put in some empty things here. So, monster, spicy, uh, slashing. So, hey there, noun, you are pretty adjective when you are verbing, okay? So now, if I tried to run this, whew, we're gonna have a problem. Right, because we can see that I don't have enough arguments. What, what, what does that mean? I've indicated that I've got one, two, three things that I need to substitute it in, but I've only provided one of them. So now I need to actually change my print command here slightly. Now I've got this thing where text, and now I'm gonna put all of my arguments in these side these parentheses separated by commas. So now when I run this, I get, hey there monster, you are pretty spicy when you are slashing, right? And we could change these individually. Now that's pretty swanky, right? Because um, while that example might be silly, we can imagine a situation where uh, instead we've got text that's like this. Uh, and in this case, we're gonna use D instead uh, to represent digits. And so now I'm gonna pass in just cats. You have blank cats, cats. You have digit cats, right? So now when we run this, we can see that we've gone ahead and thrown in the number two. Now that's uh, really handy because you know, just a second ago we saw that, oh, you know what? I got this. I got a, I got a sick handle on this. I bet if I was really fancy, I could do something like this. You have, right, plus two. I'm gonna join these things together. Right, so this, at first blush, should seem like it's gonna produce the same thing. And it doesn't. Well, what gives?
Well, what we're trying to do here is we're indicating a mathematic operation, and we've got different data types. We've got this string, right? We've got this, these series of characters that are non-mathematical. We've got an integer, which tells Python, hey, I probably want to do some math. And then we've got another set of strings. So poof, that's less than ideal. Now, if we wanted to replicate this sentence over here, we would need to explicitly indicate that two should be evaluated as a string. So str, this thing's a string inside of here. So now we can see that we get the same result. Now, that's all well and good, and there are some uh, circumstances where we might want to do that. But there are also some circumstances where this happens to be much more useful. Now, what happens if I have a float? Maybe I've got 2.5 cats. Don't ask me how I've got half a cat. That's a secret, and I can't tell you. Let's run that. Well, we still only get two. What gives? Well, d happens to return an integer, right? So this is going to give us just a whole number. So 2.5 isn't going to work right. We can instead, however, use dollar sign $r, or excuse me, percentage sign $r. Now, that's going to allow us to stick any old thing in here. So it doesn't matter whether this is going to be a string, a float, an integer, no matter what we stick in here, it's going to go ahead and join them together. You've got 2.5 cats, you've got blue cats, oops, and blue, I need to go ahead and, right, I forgot to put that in quotation marks to help Python understand uh, that it's a string. You have blue cats, okay, great, you have... 10 cats. Oh, heaven help me. I hope I'm never in a world where I've got 10 cats. Right, so we can see here where R might solve a bunch of problems for us um, that happens to be really useful and handy. And it can also be one of those uh, things where we might use that a little more sparingly, a little more carefully, depending on what the particular circumstance is that we're going to go ahead and think about. Okay, so that seems pretty swanky so far. I like that. Uh, that's pretty helpful. But what about numbers? Let's, so let's go ahead and print out some numbers. So we saw just real quickly before that when we had uh, my number, and let's call it my integer, is 10, and we're going to print out my int, we can see that, lo and behold, we get 10. Right, we might have uh, my other int, and that might be 20. And now, we could actually add those things together. So, my int plus my other int. Right, so now we can go ahead and see that, sure as shooting, we've got 30. We could do any number of mathematic operations in here, right? So this, you know, again, this seems pretty straightforward and pretty down to the point, but again, this is kind of just helping us wrap our head around what on earth this whole print situation is going to be and why that might be useful or not useful. So we've got a bunch of different mathematic operations that we can throw in here. Well, that's just super and great. If I throw in a comma, this is actually going to tell uh, Python that I want to print out one of these things and then the other one of these things. So it's not going to do any mathematic operations in this particular case. That's also really handy to know, right? So we could even think about what if we had something like uh, text, my, and let's put this in quotes, my int is... So we could think about doing something like, first I want my text, and then I want my int. Right, and we can see that sure enough, that's another way for us to kind of join things together that are printed out. Now, why go through all the trouble of this? Well, the reason that we go through all the trouble of this is there are an innumerable number of circumstances where we need to be able to print things out in our console in order to see what they're doing. And some of the very simplest and easiest things for us to kind of wrap our heads around are what printing statements are uh, and how we can use those in various circumstances. All right, so that kind of helps us get a sense of what printing is. I know that's like a little bit rough and tumble and fast, and 
As you come back to this, hopefully this will make more sense. And this is really just to try and help us think about, okay, so we've got these things called integers, remember? So the recap for us today is that my int is a whole number, my float is a decimal, my string is going to be some kind of text. My boolean is going to be something that's true or false. Right, and we can print any, any of these things or all of these things, right? So let's just go ahead and print all these out. My int, and we're going to put these on new lines. So we're going to print out my int, my float, my string, and my bool, because that's how I roll. Right, and now we can go ahead and run this, and there we see all of our things show up. All right, so that's just a little bit to help us kind of start getting our, the, you know, the wheels greased here a little bit as we start to think about what's an integer, what's a string, what's a float, and, and why are those things important? Uh, and they will become very important for us, especially as we start to do more with Python and really suss out what it is that we might think about Python as being good for, for us and how we kind of peer inside what's going on there. All right. Thanks for listening, everybody. Have a great night.